The key word is recreation of confidence. Now, Tom Miroff, I will come to Jim in a moment. Tom Miroff, how do you feel looking at both sides, East and Western Europe? Uh, how do you see um, uh, the development of, of uh, confidence? Uh, are you confident about the development of confidence? Yeah, you? Well, it depends on, on what are your expectations in terms of confidence. If it's just market short-term confidence, it's probably always already a problem. If it is, which I think is more in need of, a long-term confidence, I think we are badly in need of. And I'm uh, very close to, to what uh, Joe Ackerman has said in the beginning. Um, he, he put it a bit into a question form. Uh, I, I think it de deserves even a more affirmative way. Have we lived beyond our means? My answer is yes, we have lived beyond our means. Uh, and uh, second question was, has cheap money produced false asset prices? My answer is yes, it has, and it is already going to do the same. My sense is, if we want to rebuild trust, we should not only discuss about relationship between banks and authorities, i.e. governments and supervisory authorities, we should include people. And I think we haven't yet seen the whole reaction of people to what is happening. I think the political impact of what currently happens is yet to be seen. To take one example, Wherever in a democratic state these days you have elections, more or less each and every government does not get re-elected. So this is clearly a sign of mistrust, even though sometimes it's not easy to find. Or do we get into a G20 whatever frame in which we don't just discuss about the right regulation and the right supervisory institutions, but discuss about who can do what so that growth is more sustainable because the alternative to kind of wrong growth we have seen cannot and must not be no growth, it should be a different growth. Thank you, Tom. Jim, you, you are very well known for your concern for socially and environmentally responsible growth. And I think um, following what uh, Tom just said, how, how would you see the broader uh, objective surrounding this must to recreate growth? <clears throat> well, I think, Klaus, that the important thing is that the discussion up to now is the traditional discussion of the rich countries of Europe and the United States and maybe Japan and that it's important to introduce the change that is occurring since the year 2000. This discussion would have been valid until the year 2000 when 80 percent of the world's income went to the countries that we're discussing. But since the year 2000, the six billion people on the planet have started to grow, and by 2050 it'll be nine billion. And only a hundred million of that increase goes to the countries we've been discussing. The other 2.9 billion goes to India, China, and the developing world. And what is also happening is we're starting to see that the 80 percent that the rich countries had is now being affected by growth particularly in China and to a modest degree in India. And what I think we must be looking for is how we deal with a world that's not just in relation to the current crisis, which the people on the panel know much more about than I do, but that we need to start thinking about what is going to be the changing role of China, of India, 
of the countries that by 2050, on many projections, would say that by 2050, the 80 percent of the rich countries will be down to 35 percent of the world's wealth, and 50 percent of it will be in China and India. Well, maybe it's out 5 percent or 10 percent, but the move is clear. And what we need to do is to be thinking about that transition in a way that we have not been thinking. The second point I just want to make is that we still haven't dealt with the question of poverty. Still half the world lives under $2 a day, and a billion people under a dollar a day. And as we look forward to 2050, there is still going to be very substantial poverty on the planet. And the difference is that once poverty was uninformed, today poverty is informed. With the cellular radio, with communications, the world is informed on what is happening. So it's no longer something that we can just push aside and say that's in Africa. Africa will have 2 billion people by 2050 in a population of 9 billion on the planet. And I just want to introduce this issue of development and the issue of poverty because I think these are issues which will intrude on our discussions of the Europe and the United States and Japan in a way that has not been so up to now. Jamie, if you take what uh, you just heard um, and the race um, of uh, the BRIC countries, as we usually call them, uh, how will it affect, in your opinion, uh, the global financial uh, system and the obligations of the uh, global financial system? All right, so let me just, I just want to comment a little bit on some of the things I heard. I don't want to be overly optimistic or pessimistic. I think we're overdoing a little bit. I'm going to talk about the United States, Europe, and emerging markets real quick. The United States, I'm not talking about next six months. I, am, I would be wildly optimistic about the future of the United States. I think if you want to sell short a country that's got an enormous work ethic, fabulous universities, global flagship companies, unbelievable technology, uh, businesses large and small, you know, I think we have this binary view of businesses. It's not the symbiotic, they all work together. Uh, it's got great institutions. I, I think the Federal Reserve has done a great job. Yes, democracy, watching some of these things is a little painful, but I would be a long-term optimist. I guarantee you some of, uh, of the American economy will be doing better five or seven years from now than it is today. I think Europe, I just want to take a step back on history. And, you know, it was, I think it was 1950 when the European Union kind of started in earnest. I think it was probably the greatest political experiment of all time. Most people in 1950 would not have predicted the success where it got to. It started the monetary union. Uh, it was only, I think, 12 years ago, in effect. Uh, we all want us to succeed. I think mankind has made an awful lot of progress. And, you know, it's run into a kind of a bump in the road with all the complications of having a common currency across 16 nations that don't necessarily have the same fiscal, fiscal uh, uh, policies. Uh, but I, I wouldn't sell it short in its ability to get through this issue. And I think uh, the minister mentioned that there's, a, I think, a lot of political uh, will to make sure they get through this crisis and then get back uh, on a growth path. And I think at the heart of it, it would be hard to look at the BRIC nations, and I think there are others other than the BRICs. You can put Indonesia, uh, Korea, you know, maybe uh, Malaysia, some others. You have to be pretty optimistic about them, too. First of all, they've been rational, they've been growing, uh, they're getting better almost every year when you look at it. Um, and I think they gotta, it needs to be continued, so just look at specifically, they will be an engine of growth. To be an engine of growth, they have to have a sound financial system. You cannot be an engine of growth without a sound financial system. And if you don't believe me, I can't name the countries here, but a lot of countries don't have one, they will not grow. Uh, and they need, and if you're a financial institution in the, in the emerging markets, the first thing is to have a really healthy home market. Win in your own market. You know, use technology, travel the world, have best practices, win in your own market. Then, so I think secondarily, follow your multinational competitors around the world. You see Indian banks doing that today, and Chinese banks, uh, both the local markets as they uh, expand around the world. And I think some of those companies have the right to aspire to being huge global enterprises down the road. It's obviously it's complex, it's more complex than that, but the first thing is to make sure the home market is right. And the fourth thing is a country has to have really good policy to succeed, fiscal, monetary, you know, regulation, law, 
those things are critical for any country uh, to do well. And you've seen Brazil, China, India, Russia, and I'm talking about over 10 or 15 years, do those things. I think you've seen in Korea, and you've seen a lot of countries whose names I will not mention, who have been doing nothing but going backwards for the last 15 years.